Hello everyone, welcome back to the Scrap and Stamp YouTube channel. It's Jess here and today I'm sharing three ways to use Simon Hurley's new Lunar Paste. Here's a closer look at Clear Skies. As always, I'll have all the links in the description box below. Let's get started. The first way you can use Lunar Paste is pairing it up with your Ranger Blender brushes and you can blend it just like you would Oxide inks. The bottles were designed so that they perfectly fit together. This way you can create a really cool distressed kind of looking background and it doesn't need as much time to dry. I went ahead and grabbed a piece of copy paper so that I could protect my craft mat and went ahead and just applied an even layer of the paste onto the stencil. And now for the big reveal. Love it! See how you get that really cool metallic sheen. For the second way to use the paste, we're going to go classic and grab a palette knife. This way you can get a really thick, cool texture on your backgrounds. You just need to have a little bit more time for it to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just layer bunches onto the stencil and then if I put too much, that's okay. I can easily take all the excess off the stencil and apply it back into the bottle. And now for our second reveal love how you get that really cool solid thick texture and you can really see the metallic sheen when you're creating with the paste be sure to clean your stencils right away i like to have a container of soapy water close by and that way i can just put the stencil in there and then i don't have to worry about it for the blender brush i just take a piece of paper towel and wipe away any excess paste here's a peek at the two techniques side by side and off camera, I experimented with different stencils and papers. Here's Heffy Doodle's Scribble on My Heart, and here's our textured paste that we did together on the gray cardstock, craft cardstock, and black cardstock. So you get so many different looks, and I think it's a great way to create so many different backgrounds. And last, but definitely not least, our third way to use the paste is to up your sentiment game. Off camera, I applied an even layer of paste on a scrap piece of paper. I set it aside to let it dry and then I die cut Heffy Doodle's Be Mine, making sure that the blue is just on the bottom because I was going for an ombre look. Now that we have a background and sentiment to work with, let's add some lawn fawn cuteness. To create our little scene, I'm going to stamp the cute cereal bowl from Seriously Awesome and I'm going to stamp it with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink on Ultra Smooth cardstock. color in our image, I'm going to reach for my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend Markers. When I'm coloring small images, I like to go from darkest to lightest, moving between colors in small circular motions. That way you won't see any harsh lines between the colors. For our bowl, I wanted a really fun and colorful look, so I reached for the True Blue Blend, and then I'm going to color in the marshmallows, purple, pink, and turquoise. And for the spoon, I'm going to use the Ice Gray Blend. This little image brings back so many memories of watching cartoons on Saturday mornings. For the milk, I wanted that look that the marshmallows have melted into the milk. I took the lightest coral blend and applied it around the edges, bringing out the color with my blender pen. The marshmallows are so tiny, so all that's needed is one blend of each color. With our cereal bowls all colored in, now we can assemble the card. So I went ahead and took one of the backgrounds we created earlier and trimmed it down and adhered it to our card front, which is an A2 size stitched rectangle. And now we can place our cereal bowls and our sentiment. I wanted our Be Mine sentiment to pop, so I added some dimension. Altogether, there are three different layers, one with white cardstock and then to offset it, black cardstock. This is where I realized I wanted to stamp a sub sentiment. So I used some heavy memo tape to keep our cereal bowls in place and I'm going to carefully stamp our sentiment. If I'd already adhered everything together, it would be a little bit risky with the misty and getting ink on the rest of the card. Now it's go time. We can remove the backing papers and place our cereal bowls. And now we can add our sentiments. And we can't forget to dot our eye and add the final sentiment strip.
And of course, no card is complete without coordinating sequins. And we'll add glossy accents for that liquid effect. And here's the card. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time.